Mr. Sinan from the country's coverage of the ongoing Israel-Hamas war. Now, the war in Gaza is showing no signs of stopping. Right. Hours after Hamas rockets killed three IDF soldiers, Israel retaliated by striking Gaza's southernmost city of Rafah. According to Hamas health officials, the Israeli airstrikes killed at least 22 people, including six women and five children. One of the children was just five days old. Now, according to reports, at least nine people were killed in a single strike that hit a residential house. The Israeli military has confirmed the counter-strike, saying it struck the launcher from which the Hamas projectiles were fired, as well as nearby military structure. Following the Israeli airstrike, wounded Palestinians were taken to a nearby hospital. Moreover, Israel's government has moved to shut down the operations of a prominent media network, Al Jazeera, in the country branding it as a mouthpiece for Hamas militants. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the cabinet agreed to the closure while the Gaza war is going on. Netanyahu cited that the network threatened Israel's national security. The measure issued on Sunday includes closing Al Jazeera's offices in Israel, confiscating broadcast equipment, cutting off the channel from cable and satellite companies and also blocking its website as long as the war continues. Now, after the order was issued, Israeli authorities raided a Jerusalem hotel room used by Al Jazeera as its office. Al Jazeera has condemned Israel's move to shut down the network. They say the move is a criminal action and the accusation that the network threatens Israeli security is dangerous and a ridiculous lie that puts its journalists at risk. The network says it reserves the right to pursue every legal step. All the equipments were taken away from one of our life positions. We, uh, our, the safety of our journalists is, is very important. We will continue to abide by the law and uh, I think uh, uh, in the coming days we will try to pursue all legal uh, uh, paths to uh, counter this, uh, but for now uh, the coverage will continue, the impartial coverage will continue. Now to discuss this further, we are being joined by Professor James A. Russell, Associate Professor in the Department of National Security Affairs at NPS. He's joining us from Monterey. Thank you so much for joining us on World DNA, sir. Thank you. Uh, sir, the latest flare-up in tensions, it has put the prospects of a true steal in jeopardy. What's your assessment of where things stand right now? I think the truce is dead. Well, not that it was ever agreed to anyway. Mm. Military operations are back underway, and I would expect that Israel is going to invade Rafah, uh, and we're going to receive a resumption of uh, killing, large-scale killing on the part of the Israelis with more airstrikes, and um, the body count is going to continue to rise. <clears throat> Right, so you speak of how uh, the prospects of a truce deal is dead. With no breakthrough in the latest talks which took place in Egypt, CIA Director William Burns is on his way to Doha for an emergency meeting with Qatar's Prime Minister and so is the Hamas delegation. Do you think with this, uh, with this flurry of activities at the moment that the talks can somehow be brought back on the track? I think the only way these talks can be brought to any kind of meaningful action is for the United States to start uh, exerting real actual, real actual influence on Israel's behavior. Uh, the Biden administration has shown no inclination to want to do this. Um, since the start of the crisis, the Israeli prime minister has gratuitously slapped around the American president. The American president has put up with it. He declines to introduce any conditionality to uh, American military aid uh, and economic aid and political support that is enabling Israel's genocidal campaign. And until the United States is willing to step up to the plate and take meaningful action uh, to, to uh, try to curb some of Israel, Israel's egregious behaviors, I don't think there's anything that's going to happen. I think the, the slaughter is going to continue and it's going to start soon. 
Uh, right, sir, absolutely. Now, just for more clarity on this, even though you've touched on this already, we've seen that Israel, right from the start, had been very adamant on a Rafa offensive, and that, in fact, was a bone of contention in these true yeah. stocks as well. Now, Israel yeah. has, in fact, redoubled its efforts. It said that nothing is going to stop Israel from defending itself, and if it has to stand alone, it will. That being said, mm -hmm. how do you reckon things panning out in the region? Well, I, I, I think that... Uh, Israel uh, shows, I think, again, as I've said before about Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, as, uh, as dangerous and destructive a figure he is, you can't uh, accuse him of not being clear about what he stands for. Hmm. Uh, and he has said that uh, he's prepared to stand alone. Um, and I don't think Israel cares one whit about what the region thinks of uh, what it's doing in Gaza. Um, this is this points to this fundamental sort of uh, the disagreement, if you will, or a, 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 a different outlook between the United States and Israel. Uh, the United States sees the prospect of, of a, a wider agreement between Israel and its uh, surrounding adversaries as the key to a long-term peace. And Israel, of course, has no interest in integrating uh, with its neighbors. They have no interest in reaching political agreements with the Palestinians or even the surrounding states, which would sort of alter the sort of uh, the geopolitical calculus, which might, at least in the American view, enhance Israel's security. Israel sees its security as a function of bombs, of fences, of uh, detention centers. Um, and throwing the Palestinians in concentration camps. And that's what this is about. And, and uh, hmm. uh, that's the outcome that I think we can expect to see over the next month or so, which is that the citizens of Rafah are going to be moved into a concentration camp. Uh, may, maybe it'll be at a refugee camp administered by the United Nations. But Israel wants the Palestinians out of Gaza. And they are going to uh, hmm. start settling Gaza the way they have the West Bank. And this is the uh, Likud Netanyahu sort of uh, religious right wing plan. And um, it's based on a policy of, of coercive colonization. And they are going to set about pursuing this. And, you know, I, I, the United States is, uh, is, is, <laughs> is enabling all of this, of course. Uh, and um, so, but that's the outcome. It's the, the policy hmm. of coercive. Colonization right. is going to continue only now. It's going to also be happening in Gaza. Right, Professor James, with an imminent Rafa invasion, we'll have to wait and see how things pan out. Thank you so much for taking yeah. our time and joining us here on World DNA. Thank you.